Hello and welcome, my name is Stefano and today we're going to learn how to set up a Project Zomboid container with an Unraid and we're going to mod it a little bit too so you can know how to do that so that way you and your friends can have a little bit more fun while slaying some zombies um, on your custom server or on your own server. So with all that being said, the first thing we're going to do is get logged into Unraid. If you haven't done that already, go ahead and do so. And then we're going to go into the community applications and search for Project Zomboid itself. If you don't have pro if you don't have the community apps uh, already installed, then you need to go Google search how to do that. But you should have it already if um, if you've ever used Unraid before. So we're going to be installing the container Project Zomboid by um, itch77 or ick777. One of the first things that I like to personally mod is change the network type to custom bridge. So that way my server can have its own IP address that's separate from the host Unraid server itself. So if I were to leave it as bridge, then it would have the same IP address as the server. So we don't want it as the Unraid server and we don't want to do that or I don't want to do that. So I'm going to change it to 69 and we are going to change this validate installation to true. And those are the only two things we need to modify. Um, however, there is one other modification you can do optionally, and that is here with the ports. So currently it says that each player that connects to your server needs its own port. So that means right now there's 64 ports that you will have to open if you want um, 64 players on your server. You can increase this number if you want, you can decrease this number if you want, um, but for right now, we're just going to leave it as um, as default, uh, and then we're only going to open up specific ports in our router. So we're not going to change the actual container defaults, we'll leave it as that. And um, the other ports that you'll also need to port forward are the game port and the Archon port. So those are uh, very important. The Archon, port, the Archon port's actually optional, um, but we'll get there when we get there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit apply. It is going to take some time for this uh, container to download and install because it's got to download the game from Steam and that download speed may vary depending on your home internet. So uh, just get, be patient, give it some time and I'll show you a way to know when it's done uh, whenever it's done. All right, so the container has done, uh, is done being installed and now we just want to check the logs by left clicking on the icon and clicking logs. And we can see here that it is connecting an honestly to Steam. And so it's still going through the process of actually downloading or validating the update, whatever it is, whichever it's actually doing. So it's gonna go through the process. And what we'll see is this will transition from a downloading state to a running state. And one of the last lines that we'll see uh, to know that it is in fact done and ready to go is something about Discord. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get there, but this is, going to take some time so bear with me on that one okay so the server is done being downloaded or I'm sorry the game is done downloading and the server is now available and running and I basically know that because in the past I've seen that uh, this right here is pretty much a token that says hey this the game is running but also you can see right here on this line it says server is started or server started so we're pretty much good to go but we're not quite done customizing the server and actually making it available to the public and or just our friends. So we're gonna close this window, we're going to stop the container, and then we're gonna to wanna to edit the game files itself. Now, if, if you're on Windows, um, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and download Notepad++. It's one of the best tools out there for editing um, text files. And that's what I'm gonna use and show you guys. If you're on Linux, you'll just have to use Vim, Nano, or one of the other awesome uh, text editors out there. So anyway, we're gonna wanna go in the app data directory because that is where Project Zomboid lives. We're gonna click on Project Zomboid. We're gonna click on um, 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 Zomboid server. And inside of server, there are two important files for mod modding your server and making it available and basically customizing it to your desires. And we're gonna just wanna go ahead and open um, the first one, which is server test INI. So this is the one that we need to modify first in order to make it available to just our friends or to everyone in general. So in order to do that, we're gonna make, wanna make sure that the first line we edit on line six is set to true. So open equals true, cool. Now uh, on line seven, we can customize all of this text here to whatever we want. 
In this case, I'm going to say, uh, welcome to the server hosted by SPX Labs. Cool, done. Now, there are a lot more options to change in here if you want. I'm not going to cover every single one of these, just the important ones and then also the modding ones, so sorry about that. So um, we're just going down the list here, and one of the first ones that pops up is mods. So what we're going to do is go to the Steam community page uh, for the workshop specifically for um, Project Zomboid. And we're just going to say, hey, let's just sort these by top rated of all time. All right, better sorting. OK, cool. So this is how you mod. So you're going to look for, at the bottom of the mods page, the mod ID and the workshop ID. You're going to need both. Uh, but for now, we're just going to do this one. And let's grab one more. Okay, so each time you download a uh, or want to install a mod on your server, you will have to put in the names, the mod ID uh, here with a semicolon, and each one will be separated, no spaces. And we also want to change the starting location. There are four options. Um, you have Riverside, Rosewood, Maldra, and uh, I don't know, one other one. So we're just going to say we want to start Riverside. All right, we've made that change. Now. The, this public option here on line 24, you have the ability to make the, this server public to everyone, so that means pretty much anyone can join, or you can make it available um, just to your friends and you can leave it public as false, so that way they have to know the information, your WAN IP address, in order to join your server. Um, I'm gonna set it true, because I do want random people to be able to join. Uh, we're gonna change the name from, the public name from, uh, Docker Project Zomboid to uh, Death Clock. That'll be the name of our server. And um, public description, let's just say hosted by SPX Labs again because I'm frugal like that. Um, I'm gonna change the max players to eight because I only have eight friends, unfortunately. Uh, if more people join, we can change this number later by stopping the server, editing this file, increasing it. Um, let's see here. So there are a couple more things that are pretty well hidden. Ah, okay. So if you have a, pa a password on your server, it's there's, there's going to be a filter that filters out your server from the public uh, available, available servers. Um, you can set a password if you want. You don't have to. The default password is Docker. We're going to change this to Unraid Rules. And then we're going to keep scrolling down because we're done with that. That was on line 55, by the way. We'll keep scrolling down. And now we are looking for the, la the last couple of things we want to modify. Uh, workshop items. Okay. So we want to download two mods. So the other thing that we need are workshop items. So we're going to go back to our better sorting. And we're going to grab that workshop ID because that's important semicolon and then we're going to go back to our trailers mod copy that and paste that and boom now we've now we've told the server hey download both of these mods so the, it'll automatically do that for you and the last thing we need to do is put our WAN IP address here where it says server browser announced IP if we do not put our WAN IP address in there then nobody will be able to join our server so let me show you that how to get that. So what you're gonna do is just type into Google what is my IP address. And you can click on the first link that comes up and what that's gonna show you is your WAN IP address. So in my case, it's 69420-1337. So I'm gonna copy and paste this and put that into my server test.ini. Click save and those are all of the changes that we need to make to the server test.ini, including mods. Now, if we want to further customize our um, server, there's another file that we need to edit that's called server test underscore sandbox. And we can edit this one. And this one's really cool because it has all of the options for your specific world. 
um, to modify like the number of zombies that spawn, the amount of food, blah 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 blah, when the water shuts off and all that mess. I'm also not going to go through all of these because there is a wiki that explains all of this uh, for Project Zomboid, but we're going to say we want maximum zombies, we want, uh, oh wait, maximum zombies would be 5 actually. We want uh, distribution to be 3, so I guess everywhere. Uh, we're going to leave weapon loot, we're going to say no weapons, we're going to increase food to 5. The temperature we're going to leave in the middle about medium at three and i think we're going to leave everything else uh, we're going to make the zombies uh speed we're going to increase their speed to three or one i'm not sure we're just going to hit all these we're going to raise all these up mortality five reanimate three okay we're going to leave here we go sight three 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 so this is going to be a very tough game and i don't recommend set doing the settings i'm doing i'm just showing you all right and now we're done. We've made all the changes we need to to the server, and uh, it should start working from this point. All right, one last thing we're gonna do is port forward. So our server, now that it's ready to go, and that will be available, we're gonna wanna port forward all those ports we mentioned earlier. And that basically looks like this here. So I've already done this. Everyone's router is different. But as I mentioned earlier, I only want eight players to be available. So I've only actually opened eight ports for individual players to um, the open internet. And I've also, this one's very important, I've also added a port forwarding for 8766. So this basically lets Steam know that I'm hosting a server so that way any Steam, or any people that are looking for Steam games um, can find my server uh, publicly available. This one's really important. If you don't do this one, it's gonna be very hard to find your server. And honestly, I don't think if you do it, you won't be able to join at all, or at least I wasn't able to. So make sure you port forward 8766 to make your life more simple. Um, so yeah, that's that's unfortunately the the uh, port forwarding spiel here. So sorry that was uh, short and succinct. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the game itself and see what we get. Oh, actually, no, we got to do one more thing. We got to start the server. So we're going to go back to Unraid. We're going to click Start. And then we're going to look at the log file to make sure there's no problems. OK, it, it's installing our workshop items. That's good, that's what we want to see here. And our server is ready to be joined, so now we can go ahead and launch the game and start playing Project Zomboy on our uh, brand new modded server. Okay, to join the server you just created, you're gonna click on join, um, you're gonna click on internet, and we're gonna also want to make sure that we say show password protected servers, uh, because we do have a password on our server. And then we named it Death Clock. So let's search for Death Clock, and there it is. So now we can um, add our password. So this was Unraid Rules. The account name doesn't matter. You can put anything you want here. I'm going to put SPX Labs, of course. And then my password is also going to be XPX Labs. Um, you don't actually need an account, but that's how you would join the server anyway. We're going to save it to our favorites. And then now we're going to actually join the server. It's gonna take some time. Do, 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 do. And what's really cool about this, this game is if you don't have the mods already installed that you installed on your server, it'll actually ask you, or well, not really ask you, but force you to install the mods anyway. So you can click install. It'll download those for you for off the workshop, which is awesome. And boom, we have loaded into our server so we can pick our, uh, firefighter or whatever we can pick our profession and we can start playing and so that is how you set up a project zomboid server as a container with an unraid and do some basic mods and all that jazz so if anybody has any questions feel free to ask i'm also going to post a link in the video description below that outlines most of these steps then shows you in a written forum how to do everything that we just saw minus the modifications uh, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop a comment below and I will be sure to uh, take a look at those. And I want to give a special shout out um, to Jay and Aaron and Scott and I'm forgetting somebody. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys for sending donations and supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate that. And for everyone else, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.